Hello, today I'm going to be looking at Derwent's drawing pencils. I was given this tin when I was in my teens, so it's a good 30 odd years old. And it's seen better days now. These are the only ones I've got left from the original set. I have bought a few individual uh, pencils, so you can see the style has changed slightly, the ends have changed. So I put off getting a new set for quite some time because I have got a few of the individuals. But I saw this set on eBay for under £30 and decided to go for it. I think usually you can find it for between £40 and £45. The full range is 24 pencils, but because they are such lovely pencils, I think everyone would like a greater range. They're very natural, earthy colours. They've been light fast tested with the blue wall scale, which goes from zero to eight. All of these are eights except for ink blue, which is a seven. So they're all clustered excellent. You can get them in six, 12 and 24 packs. So just taking a look at these latest ones. So here's my slightly older individual one. Here's one from the new pack. And here's an op for the original ones. They're the thicker barrels that you can get from Derwent, which are eight millimeter and a five millimeter diameter of the color. So I'm gonna quickly swatch these out. I like to have a color swatch on hand when I'm drawing, and then I'm going to draw a bird with them. I'm going to swatch out the pencils on white copier paper, just to see the color. And I'm going to sharpen each pencil before I use it to see if there's any breakage and how a sharp point reacts. I haven't used a Derwent drawing pencil in a while and my first reaction when I use them every time is just how soft they are and it's a creamy kind of softness as opposed to a chalky kind of softness like Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils are. You can see there's a fair amount of crumb produced but the tip hasn't worn away too massively and it, it only the very very end of the tip actually broke off. I'll speed through the rest of these now. So there are all the colours. None of the leads snapped when I was sharpening them. And I used the Coombe double metal sharpener to do them with. This sepia is a bit shorter, but I think I just got carried away sharpening it. Some feel very slightly softer than others when you're using them and they produce slightly varying amounts of crumb, but overall they're just absolutely beautiful to use. For the colours, I'd say that the pale cedar and the crag green are fairly similar. Crag green just being a little bit darker. Mars orange and sanguine are fairly similar. Sanguine just being a little bit warmer.
And the greys are reasonably similar, but you can see a bit of difference there. I'm just going to swatch them out on black and then I think I'll take a look at these colours compared to my other coloured pencil colours. So I just used the same order as I did on the swatch sheet for here. Some of the colours that are more similar, you can't see the difference between them very as well on the black paper. But overall though, they've got pretty good opacity. And I really do like using the white. This is, this is my, um, <laughs> this was my current white. <laughs> so these are the colours most similar to Light Sienna. And I think Luminance Burnt Ochre 10% is the closest. There's Holbein's Shell Pink, but that's paler and redder. So for Solway Blue, I already had that one. And it's very similar to Luminance Silver Grey. But it kind of it kind of lies somewhere between the blues, the greys, and the greens. Ink blue is another one that I had already, and it leans slightly to the green side, so I class that with the turquoises. So here it is, uh, next to graphite tint ocean blue. These are the warmer blues that I've got. So the I is ink tense, G graphite tint, PC is polychromos. For the smoke blue, uh, that's the smoke blue here. And it's very similar to Prismacolor's jade green. This is Holbein's sky mist. For pale cedar, I didn't have that one. This is Prismacolor's ginger root, which is obviously less yellow. And it's closest to crag green, really, from the same drawing range. So here's crag green here. Green shadow, that's it here. And it's closest to polychromos green earth. Olive earth, that's here. And it's, it's not identical to anything else. It's similar to polychromos olive green yellowish and actually Prismacolor's moss green. Warm earth I didn't have before and it is similarish to ink tense amber, Prismacolor light umber, probably closest to polychromos bistra and actually Similar to Polychromos uh, Nougat, the Derwent Drawing Brown Ochre is very similar to Polychromos Brown Ochre. I don't have my yellow swatched out, so I don't have a comparison for wheat and yellow ochre. For sepia, it's similar to Cretacolor Mega Colors Umber. That's Woody's Brown, Stabilo Woody's Brown. But actually, even with a full set of polychromos, I don't have anything identical to it. For the Mars and the Sanguine, here's Dermot Drawings, the Sanguine, and here's the Mars Orange. So Prismacolor's Burnt Ochre. Um, Luminance is Terracotta. Polychromos Sanguine, they're all quite similar. Here's the Derwent Venetian Red. So Polychromos Burnt Sienna is a cooler version of it. And actually Polychromos Caput Mortem is like a warmer version of it. Here's the Terracotta. There's nothing 
totally identical to it, but it's similar to quite a few others. And the Mars Violet, which is here. I don't have anything identical to it. Prismacolor Rosy Beige is like a lighter version. And then on my Purples page, Mars Violet, here's, this is Graffy Tint Storm. Uh, Luminance Light Aubergine. Prismacolor Grade Violet, Whole Wine Sea Fog. I haven't got anything that's very close to it at all. For the Ruby Earth, this is it here. It's probably most similar to Prismacolor's Henna, but they're not an exact match. The Chocolate, this is it here. It's most similar to Prismacolor's Dark Umber and Luminance Sepia. I don't have my blacks, greys or whites swatched out. So the warm grey. I'd say that the luminance raw umber 10% isn't too far off the greys. I've just done a quick rough sketch, just in HB pencil, of this bird which is a reed bunting. It's a pretty innocuous looking British bird that looks a little bit like a sparrow. So I'm solely going to use the Derwent drawing pencils now. Windows down, scattered clouds, smell of spring from sight. Open road, you sit in. Let's go somewhere far away Cause if all I have is you Then I'll be just fine Okay, I'm going to leave it there. It's slightly different from how I would normally sketch something in that I would usually dilute the first layers of colour pencil with Zestit solvent to create more of a wash and then build up detail. And then I would normally add finer detail with a harder pencil, such as the Faber-Castell Polychromos. The pencils are absolutely beautiful to use. They're very soft and they blend nicely. In order to get finer detail, I was having to sharpen them quite a bit or kind of twist the pencil around to use a sharper side of the lead. They're obviously quite a subtle lot of colours so there are going to be some colour limitations but I'd say overall they're absolutely a joy to use but for me definitely in conjunction with other pencils for the greater colour range and 
for the harder lead for more detailed work. But I did want to stick with just Derwent drawing pencils for this picture. So I used all of the pencils apart from these ones, the blues and the cooler reds, the one of the greys. And I took my picture from this book. Here it is again in a little bit more detail. I was struggling to get much finer detail than this really. You can see the white layers to some extent over the darker colours. What I want to do now is just quickly look at whether the colours dissolve in solvent. So that's kind of normal blending because they are quite waxy. You can see it's starting to kind of burnish relatively easily. I'll just try and zest it now. Yeah, that melts, melts quite nicely. So in a drawing normally, I would put a background layer on, melt it down like this, uh, let it evaporate and go in with the detail layers on top. This actually releases the pigment really easily. And then you could come in over the top with whatever detail you wanted. Oops. So the white lays down nicely once it's been Blend it out with solvent. If I just show you an example of it blending out over the normal pencil. And this edge that you get to the solvent does dissolve, just in case you're wondering. So I was pressing I'm pressing quite hard here. So that's the white over the colour normally. So, oops. I'm just going to burnish with a lighter colour and then go over with white as well. For... So that's it totally smooth and burnished out now. It doesn't take the white particularly well when it's burnished out, which is why I really like using the solvent. And you can 
blend over the top nicely because you've not lost any of the tooth when you use the solvent. Okay, I'll leave it there. I hope that was helpful to you. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.